Hello everyone, Garsla here. Today we'll be diving deep into some bad habits that could negatively impact your grades. Most students feel like they are falling behind in their studies, yet others seem to navigate university life effortlessly. There's a distinction between those who effortlessly succeed and those who constantly struggle. It's not about doing more, but about doing it right, consistently. Unseen pitfalls in your routine might be your barrier to success. Just as a pilot needs the right coordinates to reach a destination, you need the right strategies, and you need to know what habits to avoid. Stick around until the end to drastically improve your college career. In this video, I'm going to show you five bad habits that you should definitely avoid in your life. Bad habit number one is procrastination. Let's face it, you knew well that this was going to be bad habit number one. Procrastination was my old friend back in med school. I remember having to prepare for a big exam and somehow found myself reorganizing my entire room instead. My subconscious mind was trying to avoid the task at hand and was making excuses. Guess what? I ended up cramming the whole exam in just a couple of days. The result? Lower grades than I had hoped for and a huge amount of stress. But here's the deal. Procrastination doesn't just stop at messing with your grades. Think about it. How many times have you found yourself looking at your gym shoes gathering dust in the corner of your room as you promise yourself that I'll definitely go tomorrow? All those well-intentioned New Year resolutions about fitness and health goals seem to be stuck in a loop of endless tomorrows. And remember that friend you've been meaning to catch up with? The one you haven't called in weeks or even months? I'll do that tomorrow is a simple sentence, but that can slowly ruin our lives. To never procrastinate again, we need to understand why we do it. The primary reasons usually boil down to three things. Lack of motivation, the deadline seeming too far away, and feeling overwhelmed. Let's delve into each cause in more detail. Lack of motivation is all too common, especially when we're faced with studying dull topics. To tackle this issue, we need to focus on intrinsic motivation. The goal isn't just to convince ourselves to study to score well in the exams, but to find joy in the process of learning itself. Transforming studying into an intrinsically enjoyable task is tough, but we can start by taking pleasure in how our mastery of a subject improves over time, or how our responses to old quizzes or questions we jotted down during studying are becoming increasingly accurate. The second reason, the deadline seems too far off. For instance, if the academic year starts in September and the exams are in January, it may feel like there are eons between us and the exams. But in reality, time flies. This is why we should create artificial deadlines. Say you're studying physiology. Set a target to complete cardiovascular physiology by the end of September. Be cautious, though, not to set overly ambitious deadlines that might leave you feeling demoralized when you fail to meet them. The third reason often involves feeling overwhelmed by the sheer volume of material to study. For this, it's essential to understand exactly what you need to study, put it in writing, and set deadlines for each topic. Pareto's principle comes in handy here. 80% of the results come from 20% of the inputs. Try to figure out what's essential for that exam and focus on that. Remember, perfection is an illusion you're unlikely to attain. Moving on, bad habit number two is multitasking. Multitasking is often seen as a productivity booster, but it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. In med school, I used to pride myself on my multitasking skills. I would often sit down for a study session with multiple tabs open on my laptop. Lecture notes, research papers, the occasional YouTube tutorial video, and yes, sometimes even a cheeky tab for social media. I thought I was the master of efficiency, absorbing everything at once. But here's the thing. My divided attention was not doing me any favors. Instead of retaining the information I was studying, my brain was constantly jumping from one topic to another, leading to a superficial understanding and poor retention. Science backs this up too. Research shows our brains aren't wired to focus effectively on multiple things at once. We end up toggling back and forth between tasks, which can actually decrease productivity by up to 40%. So, what's the solution? Single tasking. This means focusing on one single topic at a time, giving it your undivided attention. I found that when I started doing this, I understood and retained the material much more effectively. It felt counterintuitive initially, but the results spoke for themselves. For instance, while preparing for a pathology test, I decided to turn off all distractions and solely focus on my study material. It felt unusual at first, especially seeing my laptop screen with just one tab open. But at the end of the day, I found myself remembering and understanding more than I used to. So, my advice is, create a distraction-free study environment and concentrate on one task at a time. It might feel slower, but it's more effective in the long run. Your grades will thank you. Now, bad habit number three is late-night study sessions. Who among us hasn't pulled an all-nighter? Late-night study sessions seem like a rite of passage for students, but they can do more harm than good. 
In my first year of med school, I was in love with studying at night. There was something about the quiet of the night that I found appealing. The whole world seemed to be asleep, and it felt like it was just me and my books. But as it turned out, I was wrong. Soon, I found myself stuck in a vicious cycle. Night after night, I was pushing my mind and body to their limits, trying to cram in as much information as possible. Caffeine was my lifeline. The result was anything but productive. I was constantly fatigued, had trouble focusing, and my concentration levels were at an all-time low. Worst of all, despite the countless hours I spent studying, I struggled to retain the information. It took me a while, but I finally understood the problem. It wasn't the amount of time I was spending on studying, it was the lack of rest. Sleep isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity. Especially when you're learning new things, your brain needs sleep to process and consolidate that information. Once I realized this, I changed my study habits. Instead of pulling all-nighters, I started to prioritize a good night's sleep above all. The transformation was incredible. I felt more refreshed, my concentration improved, and I found that I was retaining information far more effectively. It might seem counterintuitive, but sometimes the best thing you can do for your grades is to close the books and go to sleep. Trust me, a well-rested mind can grasp and retain concepts far better than a tired one. So the next time you consider pulling an all-nighter, remember my story and choose sleep. With that said, let's move on to our next bad habit, one that we don't often talk about, but it's crucial, neglecting mental health. It was my second year in med school when I hit a low point. The pressure was intense, the workload was heavy, and I felt overwhelmed. I was so engrossed in my studies that I ignored the signs my mind was giving me. Constant anxiety, a feeling of dread, difficulty sleeping. All were red flags I chose to ignore, pushing myself harder and harder in the pursuit of academic excellence. My grades started slipping, not because I wasn't studying enough, but because I wasn't taking care of my mental health. That's when I realized the importance of balance. A healthy mind is just as important as healthy study habits. If you're constantly stressed or anxious, it's challenging to focus on your studies, let alone excel at them. So, I started taking steps to take care of my mental health. I began with small changes, taking regular breaks, going to the gym, and spending time with friends and family. My overall mental health and grades drastically improved in a few weeks, so prioritize your well-being above all. Now that we've addressed mental health, let's move on to our final bad habit, lack of regular revision. Often underestimated, this habit can silently bring your grades down without you even realizing it. Remember my procrastination story from earlier? Well, it went hand in hand with another mistake. I wasn't revising regularly. I'd learned something one day, and by the time I revisited it, it was the week before the exam. Not the best strategy, I must say. One of the main reasons we forget what we study is because of a psychological phenomenon known as the forgetting curve. Essentially, the longer the gap between the time you learn something and the time you revise it, the more likely you are to forget it. The solution? Regular revision. It's like watering a plant. You can't just water it once and expect it to flourish. You need to water it regularly. Similarly, our brain needs regular revision to reinforce the concepts we've learned. Once I understood this, I made it a point to revise what I studied at the end of each day, even if it was just a quick overview. This regular reinforcement helped me remember information longer and understand it better. I also started using active recall and spaced repetition techniques, both scientifically proven to enhance memory and understanding. So don't wait until the last minute to revisit your notes. Make regular revision a habit. It might seem time consuming, but it'll save you a lot of stress. Plus your grades will reflect the effort. Well, there you have it, friends. We've covered five bad habits that could be impacting your grades and how to combat them. It's time for a change. And if I did it, you can too. If you found this video helpful, you might like this other video in which I share essential study tips. See you there.